So, you want to make a comic book. You've got great characters, a good art style, and a deep, thrilling plot. But something's missing. You put it all down on page, and it tells your story, but it just doesn't have any pop. There's no pizzazz. It's a basic comic, sure, but it doesn't hold up to the likes of, say, Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. <clears throat> now, plenty of arguments can be made as to why The Dark Knight Returns has had such a lasting impact. And a lot of those arguments could apply to your comic. Just flipping through the book, though, reveals something interesting. Miller's page design. He doesn't just use a formulaic X number of panels per page, all the same size and shape. No, he manipulates the size, number, and shape of the panels, as well as the shape of the white space between each panel. He's got full page spreads and splashes. Today the topic is bleeds, which is comic speak for partial or full page spreads. A better definition of bleeds returns to last episode's topic, gutters. A bleed is any any panel that isn't contained by a gutter on one or more sides. In other words, it goes to the very edge of the page at one point or another. Bleeds are a very good way for showing scale. Let's say you're trying to show shots of a big city in your comic. Every time you draw it, though, it just seems cramped and crowded by the gutters. Well, they solve this problem by simply eliminating the offending gutters. Just take a look at his shots of Gotham. After every single, almost, a better definition of bleeds relies on last episode's topic, gutters. A bleed is any panel that doesn't have a gutter constraining it on one or more sides. In other words, it goes to the very edge of the page, at at least one point, oftentimes more. Bleeds are a very good way for showing scale. Say you're trying to show a shot of a city in your comic. Every time you draw it, though, it just seems cramped and crowded by those gutters. Miller solved that problem by simply eliminating the offending gutters. Just look at his shots of Gotham. Almost every single one bleeds off the page in one direction or another. It really shows how large that city truly is. He also uses bleeds to show how large such underground locales as the Batcave are and how light doesn't pierce easily into the edges of such a cave. Obviously, your comic may not include caves, but applying the technique to other similarly large places, such as forests to the ocean, should prove effective. In short, using a bleed can really exemplify the scale of an object, such as these shots of the one and only Superman taking on a nuclear missile. Now, action scenes crave bleeds. Feeding off the scale issue we just discussed, they help show how large and mobile such a scene can be. Though the obvious scenes from The Dark Knight Returns are fight scenes, that's not really the only place they can be used. Anytime you want to show the movement of a vehicle, a bleed can help show that it's not just about to run into some strange white wall. Trains, cars, planes, boats, even horses and other pack animals can benefit from this. Well, it doesn't even as action as, that, as things like that. Anytime you have an overhead crowd scene, even, or not even an overhead, a crowd scene, using a bleed can help show that the scene is actually still alive. And here's what I was talking about with animals and vehicles. When people are moving, if the page, if the panel bleeds off to one direction or another, it helps show the reality and mobility of the scene and its inhabitants. Now, to once again tie back into the last issue's discussion of gutters, consider allowing a panel to be a larger bleed, while placing other smaller panels over the bleed, and using the larger bleed as the smaller panel's gutter. This technique allows the story to keep moving around a page spread, while still showing the 
scale that the blade of belt emphasizes. It also helps to immerse the reader in the scene, as in this page showing the Batmobile's cockpit. The black gutters reflect the dark cockpit of the vehicle in a similar way. Any shot that uses such a bleeder gutter combo will reflect the surroundings of the action going on on the smaller panels. The short and narrow on bleeds is this. Use them wisely. Use them to depict the scale, motion, and ambiance. They can enhance suspension of disbelief, but if they're overused, they completely break that very suspension you're trying to preserve. They are a tool to be used sparingly, because if you overdo it, you're going to overwhelm your reader or even annoy them because you're just taking up pages with single images. Thanks for watching. Send in any questions you may have, and tune in next time where we'll take a look at some of those viewer responses.